Let's go. Ready? I'm ready. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming. Today I have the conversation with Reed. Okay, talked about the jiu-jitsu, the gym. Okay. Now I really can make the yourself for everybody, for the guys now here or no. Talk to yourself, Reed, please. Talk about myself? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna bore everybody talking about me. Um, yeah, so basically I'll just start by a little bit of my background and how I came around to uh, Star Paradigm. Um, I guess it started with me with wrestling in high school. I, I joined the high school wrestling team and I was a little tiny guy. I was like 100 pounds my freshman year of high school. And the football coach was also the wrestling coach. And so I had played football and he recruited me to come out for wrestling. And, and that's really how I started with wrestling. Um, went on and wrestled through high school and college. In college, I wrestled at UC Davis, where I was teammates with Uriah Faber and Mark Munoz. And um, that was kind of a cool time. It was, you know, 2004, 2005, MMA was starting to get popular and Uriah and Mark were both transitioning from wrestling into MMA. And so, you know, being around them, I, I started to dabble in Nogi and, and hanging around MMA gyms. And so later, um, it was like 2009, I moved back to Texas. I was living in Houston and um, I was coaching wrestling at a local high school at Kincaid. I hooked up with George Parker. We were both, you know, former wrestlers and, you know, just helping out, wanting to stay involved in the sport. And so George came up with the idea of getting our own space. So we, we rented the building on South Rice. And initially it was just a wrestling club where the idea was that we could, you know, teach youth wrestling basically. But because of my experience, you know, in California, knowing Uriah and Mark, I pretty much was like, hey, if we've got this facility and we're doing this, why don't we also add some of these other sports? And so that's when Paradigm was born. Um, I'd say one thing that was different about Paradigm was, at least when we started adding other sports like kickboxing and jujitsu, is I realized that I didn't know anything about these sports. So I wasn't going to be the coach. So that's when I started looking to hire other instructors. And... Um, I would say that was kind of different at that time. In 2008, there weren't a lot of MMA or jiu-jitsu gyms in Houston. And the ones that were, were kind of owner operators. You know, I think of Jeff, Jeff Messina was getting started or was already open. Uh, Saul Solis was already open. But there wasn't any Brazilians and there wasn't anybody really doing sport jiu-jitsu. You know, the MMA gyms like Saul Solis were most riders gyms. So... I think that originally was kind of what was different about Paradigm was we had, you know, real specialists in each discipline leading the programs. Reed, uh, I conversation with you, informal informal conversation. You you now the a lot of the best guys the jiu-jitsu, you know the Margarida, you talk to me when you live in, in San Diego. Uh, when and where you did the get the interest in, uh, in jiu-jitsu? Yeah, I think I kind of touched on some of that. So, you know, for me, it started with wrestling through some of the people that, you know, like Uriah and Mark and KJ Noons, too, was a friend of mine. Um, just hanging around them and, and going to the gyms where they were training. Uh, I remember one time I was living in San Diego. So after I graduated college at UC Davis, I moved to San Diego. And again, at that time, this was 2005, 2006, there was just a lot of, uh, it, it was kind of the beginning of all the Brazilians starting to come to San Diego. So Salo Ribeiro had a gym and Uriah had opened his gym in Sacramento. And so he was coming into San Diego to meet with Salo because he was looking to hire an instructor for his gym. So it was really interesting that time because I didn't know any jujitsu, but I thought I was really tough. You know, I had just finished my wrestling career. I was 22 years old. I was in great shape. And so we would roll up at these jujitsu gyms, put on our wrestling shoes and literally just go out there and, you know, 
I remember that day uh, rolling with Shanji and Saulo. I'm in wrestling shoes and, and they're like, I didn't realize, I had no idea who they were, that, that they were such great jujitsu fighters. Um, but it was fun. And that, that's just kind of how it was back in those days. As wrestlers, we would just roll into jujitsu gyms and try and wrestle them. Same thing with Margarita. Margarita was in San Diego. He was training at City Boxing, which was the gym where KJ worked and uh, trained with him a lot and, and became friendly with him. And, you know, he would kind of refer to me and as uh, one of his wrestling coaches because I was just such a pure wrestler at that time. Nice. Saulo Ribeiro, Xande, Margarita. This is the best guys in Jiu-Jitsu in my time. The guys is best. It's Everybody world champion. Margarida world champion three, four times. Xande, Salo, is the best guys in Jiu-Jitsu the 99. Uh, Reed, uh, why did the, you decide to open the fight gym here in Houston? You know, originally, like I said, it was it was an opportunity. We want George and I wanted to stay involved in wrestling. There weren't any wrestling clubs back then in, in 2009. Uh, the only you know opportunity you had to wrestle was to go to a local school. Like I said, we were volunteering at Kincaid. Um, you know, so the motivation is it's an opportunity to give back to the sport that we loved, to introduce the sport to um, to other kids, and you know, wrestling has benefited my life so much. So that's really a big motivator for me is, is seeing the positive impact that we can have in people's lives and, and giving back to the sport. Nice. You open the wrestling and they put the jiu-jitsu in the gym for a start. Yeah. yeah so the first few months it was just wrestling. And I think it was pretty soon that we decided to add jiu-jitsu. Um, but like I said, I didn't know really jujitsu. So I had to find an instructor and there were no Brazilians in, in Houston. There were very few black belts. Um, Draculino was the first, but he was, you know, he's way out in Webster, Texas. So there was really nothing like in Houston. Um, so our first instructor was a guy named Derek Garza, um, who I met through Tyrone Glover, who I knew from San Diego. And Derek was a brown belt at that time. He now owns a gym in Austin called Dark Clan. Really, really good guy. And so Derek was our first instructor. Um, uh, but I really wanted a, a higher, not that he wasn't great, but I, I was looking for a black belt. And he was still brown belt. And I just wanted like a, a higher level guy. So somehow I got connected with Andre Montero. Yeah. Andre called Julio and said, you know, we've got a gym here looking for instructor and Julio sent Igor. And so Igor was our first real head jiu-jitsu instructor. And he was our introduction to GF team. And it, like I said, it was great because there were no, very few black belts in Houston. There were no Brazilians and Igor didn't speak a single word of English. So it, it was like, really authentic and that's that was kind of our deal is authentic brazilian jiu-jitsu from brazil from the source and um, that's kind of what set us apart in, in those early days uh you know igor was an awesome coach very technical he, he really emphasized the rules always teaching the rules and he was you know that purist you know ibj jeff rules all the way which was really interesting too because um at that time, nobody knew what the rules were. So you would go to tournaments. Like I remember there was a fight to win tournament. This was like probably 2010, 2011. I, I, I was a blue belt and I got knee barred in the gi at blue belt. And Igor, you know, throws a fit and he's arguing with Seth Daniels. Seth Daniels doesn't know the rules at all. Um, and I'm like caught in the middle translating, but that, that was kind of the beginning of our jiu-jitsu program. Yeah, the Igor is very nice. Diego is my student today. The kids. Last week I stayed a long time in the night in the conversation with Diego. Uh, Reed, uh, you studied Jiu Jitsu, you found the GF team, you going to Brazil for now the Matriz, GF team Matriz, and the, you compete in Brazil. 
talked about the the training in Brazil, the peoples, the city. Talked about the your trip in Brazil, please. Yeah, so um, I was a purple belt in 2013, and I I won worlds at or I won master worlds as a purple belt. And then Julio invited me to come compete for the uh, Brazil para equipes for the brown and black belt team. So I was like a new brown belt, and it was an opportunity to, to compete for the team in, in the brown and black belt division, which is combined together in that tournament. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Brazil para equipes is like the coolest tournament. It's a really unique format. It's um, each team, there's a lightweight division and a heavyweight division, and each team gets five guys, and it's it's the best three out of five, you know, wins or, or advances in the tournament. So I was one of the five that represented the, uh, the masters Brown and black belts. And, you know, I, I stayed there for like 10 days on my first trip. I actually went down to Rio twice, but on my first trip in 2014, I stayed with Julio. So I was living in Julio's house and we would ride to the gym every day on his moped. Like I would sit on the back of the moped. So that was pretty funny, but, um, you know, he just treated me so well, like I was part of his family. I remember his wife, Adriana, cooking for us. And, you know, my favorite thing that she made was the the bolo de mio, which is like <laughs> corn cake. I love that corn cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember riding on the back of that moped to the gym every day. And, you know, obviously everybody knows about the great training there in, in Mayer. And so it was an awesome experience. Um, but what I was getting to with the story is the, the culmination of the trip was competing in the Brazil Pura Equipes tournament. And I remember, I don't know if you know this, Marcus, but you were there. That was the first time I met you. And before the tournament, like backstage behind the bleachers, everybody gets together and we do like this huddle. And it was all in Portuguese. I, I was, of course, the only, you know, American there. And you gave this awesome speech about like I, I didn't understand very much of it but it was basically like i'm counting on you guys to defend our honor and we just we came out of that bullpen it was like braveheart like we were so pumped up ready to compete and uh i lost but our team won i actually faced big mac who was like 300 pound guy and um, i got totally smashed but we ended up winning three out of five and we got the gold medal in the tournament. Yeah. No, I know, I know see the, uh, the, not the team, Brazilian team here, the tournament with the team, but this tournament is very different. It's very good. This is adrenaline. It's very different, but I like this tournament. I think the guys put the, the tournament for team United States is very fun. But read, you the best competitor for me because no have time. I talk to you, read, have the one fight now, you go. You never scare, never step back. But talk to me, what do you feel the difference or no competing in the United States and competing in Brazil? It's same for you, it's different. Because the guys in Brazil, first time coming to compete, he's normally going to Pan or World Champion. The guys look the pyramid, the oh my God, is very scared, is very nervous. And the guys going to Brazil, because it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is a little nervous too. What you feel? The same, is different. What you feel competing in Brazil? For me, it's the same. You know, you just have to be ready to fight whatever tournament you're in. When you start getting to those big tournaments, if it's Pan Ams or if it's Worlds, or if you're in Brazil, you, you just have to expect to fight. I think that's that's some that's one reason why I've always, I think, been a, a decent competitor is, you know, that mentality is something you develop over many years of competing and competing in wrestling and you know, we focus in class all the time, practicing our moves and practicing our technique. But I think developing that mental edge, that competitor's edge of just knowing how to turn it on and and really knowing how to, to fight and, and win those scrappy matches is, is an important skill to develop. Um, but again, for me, if you're in Brazil or if you're in the United States, if, 
if you're competing at a high level in a big tournament, that's what you have to be prepared to do. Yeah, the guys have the the boat for firing semi you no have a uh, country, no have space, no have nothing. You well ready, you ride for fight. Reed, you were champion the purple belt, yes? Yeah. Yeah. What was the fight that you like more? Your fight? Is the your world champion, the purple, or have the fight, specific fight against other guys you like more? What's the like the fight you like more or the hardest fight you have in your career? Um you know, there are a few big matches that stand out. I, I think back to my college wrestling career. So, you know, growing up in wrestling and, and wrestling in high school, I always idolized Iowa. And then when I went to UC Davis, my coach was Lenny Zaleski. And Lenny was, a, I think, three-time All-American at Iowa under Dan Gable. And so all of my coaching career, I'd kind of been built up in this Iowa style. And then my senior year of college, we faced Iowa and it was like UC Davis. We were a division one team, but we weren't anything near the level of Iowa. So it was kind of a big deal for us and our team, you know, we, we lost badly. We lost most of the matches, but I won, I, I, I won that match against my opponent from Iowa. And so that was, that was really exciting for me. Um, in jujitsu, you know, the, the Masters Worlds at Purple Belt, I didn't really think much of. That wasn't too big of a deal for me at that time. Um, I think some of my super fights at Black Belt, like I think of my fight with Ignacio Neto, my fight with um, Pedro Arujo, you know, both of those fights I lost, but I think I did really well against against some great opponents. So those are a couple that I'm proud of. Yeah, I stay there. It's very hard to fight. It is it, little to tell for the guys in the fight. Read now. I have the hard situation in the world, the COVID. What do you think about the COVID response in the footry? You know, I'm I'm really just I'm excited to get back on the mat. Um, Obviously, Paradigm is following all of the, you know, regulations and the guidance that the government is putting out. And, you know, we're not going to break any rules. We're not going to come back before they give us permission. But um, from what I understand, Monday, Greg Abbott, the governor, is supposed to give some directions in terms of what the first phase of reopening business is going to look like. And, um, you know, according to the plan that that the president has laid out, gyms can open in the first phase. So we're expecting to open as soon as, as soon as we get that green light, we're hoping it's gonna be next week, May 1st. Exactly what that's gonna look like, I'm not sure. Um, most likely we're gonna have to require masks. We may have to require social distancing, you know, six feet, but um, we just have to figure out how we can follow those guidelines and, and still, you know, get back on the mat. Um, I'd also say I know each individual is going to decide for themselves, you know, whether they feel comfortable. But based on the turnout that Edgardo is having at his house, it, it looks like people are excited to start training. <laughs> Jeff, you team don't stop. Yeah. You know, I mean, my personal opinion is we should be doing everything we can to protect, you know, the vulnerable groups and, and you know, older people or, or sick people. But, um, you know, for me personally, I'm not worried and I'm excited to start training again. Yeah, this, this, this situation in the world is very hard. Everybody talk to me. The student sends to me message. Everybody except for back to the mat. Yeah, I hope next week everybody stay no together, but stay together. I hope so. Read you the paradigm have 10 years. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess 11 now we opened 2009. Nice. see. Uh, you, you watch your career? Yes, you would, Gardo. Uh, I work for Cisco. It's a food distribution company, and, and I'm part of the sales organization there. Yeah, but you have the gym long time. What's the lesson you're learning 
in the business, the business, uh, team business? Um, I guess I would say that, you know, owning a gym, owning a martial arts gym sounds like a really exciting opportunity, um, but it's a really tough business. And I don't think people get into this business to make money. You know, that there are easier ways to make money. So, you know, for us, for, for my partner, George and me, it, it's a labor of love. We do it because we love it. Um, we know the positive impact that we can make on people's lives. Um, we love giving opportunities to people like yourself and, and all the other instructors that we give, you know, opportunities um, to do what they love. And, you know, I'm really proud of the community of people that we have at Paradigm. We've got, just got a lot of great people and a great culture. And, you know, that's what really keeps me going. Yeah. The I talk to you all the time is the paradigm is not just one thing. This is the family team. Yeah, read. I talked about the I'm black belt the judo. You is wrestling college. I have a lot of people asking me about the wrestling, the judo for help in jiu jitsu. I have my opinion, and the the help the wrestling judo help a lot in jiu jitsu, but. You, you need to fix the position to fix the game because the, I have a lot of friends com, the judo competing jiu-jitsu not have the good performance uh, I don't know the, the guys the wrestling uh, there are a lot of people in the wrestling competing jiu-jitsu have the good or no performance but what you think is you need the adaptation the adaptation of your game because the rules different, the, the, the techniques you can do work different. Example, the judo, the guys stop in the back. I look the rest and the guys send. What do you think about the your adaptation of the game, the, the techniques, the, the rest for jiu-jitsu and the, the work together? Yeah, you, you definitely have to make adaptations. I actually, I've got a blog out there where I talk about specifically for wrestling wrestlers who want to transition some of the things you should walk out watch out for like giving your back for example but you know people have this mentality whatever sport they started with you know they're proud of it and they want to prove that it's the best and so it, it took me a lot of years like i described earlier of being that guy who walks into the jiu-jitsu room with his with his wrestling shoes on and, and wants to kind of fight the, the jiu-jitsu guy using wrestling and, you know, that mentality just doesn't get you very far. You have to kind of open your mind and start to bring things together and understand which parts of wrestling are going to help your game and which parts need to change. So, you know, it, it took me a long time personally to get over that hump. And now, you know, people like Chris, who's on the line tonight, you know, I, I love helping wrestlers and explain to them like, hey, you could actually do really good at, you know, submission grappling or jujitsu or whatever you want to do, but you got to learn some jujitsu. You're not going to get there just, just wrestling. And, you know, myself, Thomas, Chris, there's been a lot of people who've come through Paradigm who start, you know, Josh and Jacob, who started wrestlers and had the right mentality to make those adaptations and, and have become great at jiu-jitsu. I like the students still wrestling come to jiu-jitsu because have the, the, the firing is run fast, it's, it's very easy for adaptation, but you need to open the mic, I think so, Sam, you. Reed, what what's your the best technique or the technique you like more? Favorite position? Hmm. <laughs> um, like wrestling or jujitsu? My favorite jujitsu position? Yeah, jujitsu position. Yeah. Or you can talk to about the both wrestling jujitsu. You know, I, I don't know. I, I like playing guard, you know. <laughs> you I'm like playing guard, guard, but you just take down. You take down everybody. Yeah, in the tournament, I take everybody down. In training, I pull guard. Yeah. Pull guard is, is very beautiful. You can be, think you, you same dance, is flower, yeah. But <laughs> for tournament is work the guy is very more comfortable for me and you yeah i mean i, I 
the style of jujitsu for GF team, you know, um, you're a great example of the style that I try to emulate yourself and Hodolfo take down pressure, pass, submit. That's my game. Yeah. Yeah. Hodolfo is, is the best in the take down pass smash, but Hodolfo have the good gua. Hodolfo is work very good in the bottle too. I think for now the guys need the complete work in the top in the bottom. What your the best competitor now? Odolfo is the best. He's he's my uh, idol of jiu-jitsu. But I, I do see Scroggins. I want to give a call a shout out to Scroggins. The guillotine, I learned that from Uriah. And you guys know Uriah used to submit all of his opponents. He submitted Dominic Cruz with the guillotine, and then he did a seminar at Paradigm and showed us all the details on that. And um I win a lot of matches with the guillotine and I love teaching that too. The Bruno talk to here. We do wrestling, but pull <laughs> Yeah, he loves jiu-jitsu. The guys have the question put in the chat for read. Can they answer the question for everybody? Okay. Read. You you think you open the you start to open the gym next week. You, you wait for government. You talked about wait for for what's the rules the government and what's the the your news new goal for the gym. The kids grow up, starting the wrestling and the after jiu jitsu now have the kickboxing, boxing, stretch conditional, the 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 jeans two years in the jiu-jitsu, the last three years, two years, is third place in the Houston Open, now second place. Now it's have the good team, the comparator in the boxing and the jiu-jitsu. What's the new goods you have? There's a lot in that question. So first part is, you know, what's happening with COVID and what's happening with the future. So um, I think I talked a little bit about this earlier, but we're expecting instructions from the government from the governor of Texas on Monday in terms of when we can open and what those guidelines are going to be. So as soon as we hear that on Monday, we're going to announce our plan to open. Um, again, we're excited. We can't wait to, to be back on the mat as soon as possible, even if we have to open with some restrictions, like maybe in the initial phase, we can just do solo drills and we can't do partner drills. Even if that's the case, that's what we'll do. In boxing class, we could have one person per bag and still maintain six feet of distance. So we just have to figure out exactly what the guidance is from the government, when we can open and what we can do. Um, but I, I do want to say we're for sure coming back. You know, um, we're fortunate that we have the financial strength to open and to survive this situation as long as it takes. And I think a lot of gyms may not be in that position. So some gyms may have to close and that's unfortunate, but, um, you know, we're going to be back. We're going to be back better than ever. And um, I can't wait for that. Um, as far as my goals, I think I'll just take a step back and, and talk again about our model. So, you know, the model of Paradigm is different than some other gyms. There are, there are a lot of like owner operator gyms and, and that's not us, you know, at Paradigm, it's not about me. It's always about the instructors and we've got the best instructors, you know, we've got all of our staff is amazing. Um, you know, G and Morgan are doing a super job at the kickboxing program. Leroy Fountain is an amazing boxing coach and he's producing some serious competitors in that boxing program. Obviously the work you're doing with the jujitsu program. So, um, you know, the, what makes paradigm unique, I think is that approach of having, you know, sport specific programs. And that's actually what makes our MMA program stronger too. When I, when I think back to the early days of Paradigm, when we first opened, we were really known for our MMA program. And we had a lot of great fighters back in those times, like um, Ryan Melanson and Angel Huerta and Tim Snyder and all these guys. And they came to us for wrestling. And it was because they knew that, you know, myself and George were like the best guys in town at sport wrestling. Um, so sometimes I get frustrated when people think about MMA and they think that they need a different type of training that they don't want to train 
traditional Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or traditional wrestling, everything needs to be MMA specific. And that's not really the case. My opinion is if you want to be great at any discipline, train with people who are great boxers, train with people who are great wrestlers, train with people who are great at Jiu Jitsu and you'll get better at all those things. So that's our strategy. That's our model. And, and that's what we're going to keep doing. Yeah. I think so. You, the, the people uh, ask about the specific training for MMA, MMA, I think so. This is important, but it's important the guys training the basic wrestling, the basic Jiu Jitsu for, he have the, the foundation is very strong. It's more easy for you work in the MMA. Oh, really? I have one question for you. I I'm a jiu-jitsu coach. I'm I'm think so is the art martial artist. One art martial arts completes the other art martial arts. But how how do you feel you describe jiu-jitsu for you? What do you feel the jiu-jitsu? Yeah, so for me, like the total package is is uh the wrestler boxer you know you use the wrestling to get the fight to the ground and then you use the jujitsu to finish the fight you know um so like you said i think they complement each other jujitsu is super important and it's fun even you know you take the uh combat or or fight situation to the side sport jujitsu is just a really fun activity it's a great lifestyle to stay in shape and enjoy practicing with your friends so I love jujitsu I think as I get older you know wrestling's kind of hard on the body I think jujitsu is my favorite activity to do personally you you compete wrestling jujitsu you have the MMA fight too yeah I I did dabble in MMA a couple times I was I was lousy lousy and unprepared yeah the MMA is very uh, I think so is attractive, but it's very hard. Yeah. Well, you know me. I mean, I kind of do these sports on the side as a hobby. I've never really put it as my focus to really get in shape and prepare correctly. And that's one thing I, I've got to say about MMA. You have to be in great shape. You know, a 15-minute fight, you just have to be in great shape. Yeah. And, and, and. In the gym, in the paradigm, the, the students have the good opportunity to train well think because I have the wrestling, jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickbox, and they have the strategic conviction for the guys can they work your gas, work the gas, and they have the more conditional. Mm -hmm. oh, I ask you all the times, you will you write for fight, but what you talked about the students, the important the he can they come to stretch conditional for competing? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I was talking about MMA, you have to be in great shape, but the same is for jujitsu, right? You can have all the technique in the world, but you've got to be physically prepared to uh, win those tough fights. A lot of times when two guys of equal skill level are, are fighting, it's going to come down to who's stronger, who's in better shape. So, um, Cameron and Braylon are doing an awesome job with our, our strength and conditioning program. And it's just a, it's just a great free benefit to our members. It's included in everybody's membership. So, you know, you could go out and join F45 or CrossFit and, and pay for an extra membership um, at Paradigm that's, that's bundled in with the value. So Edgardo, what brought Professor Marcus to Houston? Good question. Um, at some point, Paradigm was growing and we wanted to expand locations, right? You, you think that if you think about all the expenses that go into running a gym, there, there are a lot that are kind of fixed expenses that you can, you could spread over multiple locations, right? You only need one website, things like that. So um, it was part of our strategy to try and grow, to open more locations. So we wanted to bring on some more instructors. And I met Marcus, I had met him previously in Brazil, but he didn't remember me, but um, we were at Worlds, I think it was 2015 or 16 Worlds, Master Worlds, it was Marcus's first time competing at Master Worlds in the US anyway, and um, Andre Montero, the same guy who had originally introduced me to Igor, 
introduced me to Marcus and I found out that he was looking to relocate to the US and was looking for a gym to sponsor his visa and everything. And I knew who he was. I knew this guy is like co-founder of GF team. He's a legend in the sport. So I jumped on that opportunity and um, invited him to Houston. I think the first visit was just kind of for him to check out the gym and see what's going on. And um, you know, the rest is history. And then same thing we, we brought, uh, get out of here, Vera. <laughs> we brought, well, Washington was already here. I don't know how Washington got here. Washington was already here, but he was uh, looking for work and needed a visa. We got Washington's visa. We brought Eduardo. We brought Von Claire. So at this point, you know, Paradigm has brought and given opportunities to at least five different, you know, guys from Brazil um, to get their visa and come to the U.S. So I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, I remember. I remember you in Brazil. You competed. I I know. I know now. You you co-founded the Paradigm. I just know here in the Las Vegas when the Andre Monteiro introduced you you again for me, and this is my first time. In 2015, I came to United States for work in the California, but uh, is the my job in the California is a little different. I know, I know, I know, have the well thing same here, and the the Monteiro talked to me about the you open the the Belfort space. Vera, yeah. come here. I'm going to my first time for World Champion 2015. I'm third yeah. place in the World Champion. And the, you talk to me for one million in Houston. I'm coming to Houston to show me the Houston, the gym, and the, you talked about the my sponsor. It's very, very good, and thank you so much for helping me in the start in the United States. This is very important for me and my family. This is the I remember started the paradigm in 2016, and the before is little students. Now the paradigm is grow up. It's very, very good. So Washington reminded me that Igor was the first to bring him here. So uh, my bad on my bad memory there. <laughs> We've had a lot of great instructors over time. And, you know, I just want to say, I know people are disappointed when, when things don't work out and people go separate ways. And there's nobody more disappointed than me that sometimes these things don't work out. Thanks, Roly. Yeah. Hi, Roly. It's good. Uh, the guys, uh, a lot of the best students, the DGF team is coming to training here. No just if me, if he go before, Evangelist is coming here before, Rodolfo, Silverio, a lot of the best guys all the time is coming to Houston. Houston is the the good gene. The guys now in Brazil is the good reference for the the your team in Brazil. Yeah, one of the first was Jake McKenzie. I don't know if many people know this story, but um, Jake was a brown belt and Igor, after we first started with Igor, he didn't have a visa or anything. He had to go back to Brazil for a few months. And Jake came and Jake's friend, Paulo Azambuja, this was like late 2009 or early 2012. They lived in that in the gym at South Rice for like three or four months. Um, <laughs> that was when I first met Jake when he was a brown belt. And I think that was actually before he had switched to GF team. He knew people from GF team, but he was still fight sports at that time. And then he moved to Brazil and, and officially joined GF team. Yeah, the, I remember the, I come to Paradigm, the Washington here. He, uh, he teach the kids class. He, he helped me a lot, my good partner. Yeah. You guys want to come say hi? All right, everybody, the, the girls want to say hi. <laughs> Vera, Nina. What's good? Washington and Sharon, Angela, everybody's on there. Also, say hi to you. What do you, what do you want to say? Hi. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's go question guys. What's the question you have for Paradigm, for Reed, for me? I now enjoy the interview. Oh, Reed, the before the I don't know the the yogi ask you here about the salt rice. Yeah, just so just rest there or, or go back to just rest. You know, for now, the plan is just wrestling. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes it just comes down to financials and we can't we can't afford to do all the things that we want to do. You know, obviously, I, I've got three facilities sitting empty right now between South Rice, the Triangle and Belfort. And we feel like Belfort is the best opportunity we have to, to make a business work that's sustainable so that we can continue to op, you know, provide these opportunities for our staff. And um, you know, South Rice has just been so far upside down financially, it's hard to make it work. Um, that said, we're always open. If, if we can keep growing and we can turn things around, I would love to uh, you know, get somebody in there and, and start doing jiu-jitsu there again. It, it also brings up another interesting opportunity. So, you know, this COVID situation has made us think differently about a lot, about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And one of the the we're kick is here now. <laughs> one of the opportunities that we're looking at is how we can um, allow people to book gyms for, for private personal use so that you don't have to train at Edgardo's house. So we're gonna come up with an online booking system so that you can reserve the triangle or reserve South Rice, just like you would book a tennis court. And you can go down there and open it up and, and use it yourself if you guys have a training partner and you just need a place to, to train at. Yeah. Sorry for the distractions, guys. Um, what do I love more, BJJ or wrestling? <laughs> Wrestling, we do so wrestling, yeah. They complement each other. Um, you know, I've learned a lot for wrestling, especially because I started when I was a young kid, and you know, all of like the the values and the character development and things that I feel like I took away from wrestling um, means so much to me. Personally, now at this stage of my life, getting older and everything, jujitsu is more fun and more enjoyable. Um, but I'm also still involved in coaching the youth wrestling program, and and that's really rewarding too to to be able to help the kids so i love both well i mean study jiu-jitsu i'm black belt to the judo everybody asks the same what you love more judo or jiu-jitsu i i think so the same i love i love both but uh, jiu-jitsu is, is is more fun you can have the different moments i don't know where else but the judo is very hard the guy just is Training, 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 training. You now have the the social moment is more power. You can go into judo and make two hundred techniques, two hundred takedowns is very hard. Jiu Jitsu is kind of more no more soft because you have the very hard training, but it's more social, it's more it's more fun. Yeah. So, Marcos, do you know? Yeah, thank you. BBGG. <laughs> I don't know, Edgar. Everybody have the same question. I think so. Is the words is normal? The words go back to everybody going back to work. The events is go back, come back. Is the BGG can they put the new calendar about the tournaments? But now is too early for the guys. But the first conversation I have the the director in the BJJ, the guys think the situation is go back. The guys put the example maybe word master words together. But this is too early for talk about. I need the COVID is go down for. 
the tournament. Everybody misses the training, the tournament. This is this is part of the life. There are a lot of people. Henry, my question. In Brazil, everybody thinks starting the judo is very good because they have the good base. I think so need to work together. What do you think for kids? For he have the good the base, the small foundation, more strong starting jiu-jitsu, or need the what you think start together? I like starting them in wrestling. I think it's a little easier to learn at a younger age. So, you know, my girls were wrestling. I mean, Kurt is wrestling now, he's one. I mean, for a little, little kid like one, two, three, four, wrestling is easy because the rules are so simple. You know, you play games like sumo, like push them out of the circle or just try and get on top. You know, I think um, you need to be a little bit more mature, like maybe five or six before you can really start to understand what it means to pass the guard and things like that. So um, with my kids, it's, you know, like Nina, for example, it's worked great starting in wrestling and then introducing jiu-jitsu when she's about five. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on introducing kids. Nice. So I saw another question up here. I forgot who asked it. Uh, I think it was Angela about Wim Hof method, how I got involved in that and, you know, kind of what, what's the deal with that. So um, the story about Wim Hof method was I had gone on a uh, spear fishing trip in Florida and these friends of mine had basically they there's a, uh, a class you can take to learn how to free dive so you can hold your breath long while you're while you're underwater to um to spearfish so i've done this free diving class and basically there's a, they call it the breathe up there's a technique you take like several minutes maybe five minutes of just deep slow breaths to slow your heart rate and build up your your blood oxygen level so that when you dive down that's how those guys can stay down for you know several minutes and then i was on another trip doing that and the guy who was with me goes what the hell are you doing with this breathing is that wim hof method and i didn't even know what wim hof method was i was like no i'm just breathing up so that i can lower my heart rate and raise my blood oxygen level and he was like oh there's this guy named wim hof who does the same thing so that was the first time i i learned about wim hof and then i started checking out his videos online and i was super intrigued by the things he does and you know it's all kind of sports science and the way you can kind of do these biohacks and and control your your blood oxygen level and, and your your energy levels using your breathing so um i got intrigued in it i i started i did his online course and i went to an in-person training workshop with him in amsterdam and then finally ended up deciding to do the uh, training certification so that i could start sharing it with our students at the gym and uh yeah, I really loved it. I, I I saw a lot of benefits personally from it with, you know, both the breathing and the and the ice baths. And, you know, it's not just the physical, also the mental. And, and I think I, you know, I talk to the team all the time about how I use that to help my mental focus with competition, how to, you know, calm yourself so that you don't panic when you get in the situation. I think um, being in an ice bath is a lot like somebody gets your back in a jujitsu match and you have to know how to stay calm and and think and override that fight or flight panic response that you get. So I've just had total, you know, tons of benefits from it. Um, the last couple of years I've, I've gravitated away from like the actual Wim Hof method, but I still use the concepts. Um, I, my personal practice has shifted more towards yoga. And I think there's a lot of like even more advanced breathing techniques that you can learn through yoga. But for me, I'd say Wim Hof is kind of like the gateway drug to figure all that stuff out for myself. This is very hard for me, but I try. But him, but have a lot of uh, study about this. Have a lot of athletes use this. This is a this is now is normal. Everybody before tournament can they make the going to ice hockey, but. Uh, for me, what do you think for more adaptation? Because I'm Washington and the other friends, 30 seconds, go out. The first time I make 34 seconds, the second time I make one minute, but I feel very hard. What's the train you- I think you, you got a better at it. I remember the first few times we did it, even Washington was in for like 10 seconds and then he was crying and, uh, 
you know, we did it a few more times and you guys all got better at it. So like anything, it, it's a muscle you can build, you can build your tolerance and you can build the, um, you know, the, the physiological parts of your body that are involved in creating heat is just like any other muscle. And you can, you can get better at it with, with more regular practice. So you just have to, if you really want to get better at it, you just have to practice it. Yeah. And you, 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 you give the award shopping and the TTDs in the a lot of jeans in the Cobrinha, where more? Yeah, there was a, about a six month period where I was out of work. Um, about three years ago, around the same time I did Wim Hof, I had left my previous job before I joined Cisco. And so I was really on a, a Wim Hof kick and I was going around doing workshops. And that was a lot of fun. I mean, I did some cool workshops. I did one at Uriah. Gym. I got to do, you know, um, Cody Garbrandt, Chad Mendez, Uriah were all in my workshop there. Um, I did a private lesson for Cobrinha and, um, and Kennedy. And that was Kennedy was at Brown Bell. And then to be able to see him go on and, and have all the success he's had at Black Bell and ADCC this year was really cool because, you know, I remember teaching him that that technique. And, and I feel like, you know, he his mental strength got better from it. Yeah, yeah. very good. Reed, if you guys haven't seen there's a cool video on YouTube. If you search for like Reed Shelger, Cobrinha or anything like that, you can watch the, uh, the session that I did with Cobrinha and Kennedy. Reed, uh, give the one message for everybody that they look up to you here. Um, I'm not sure anybody looks up to me, you know, my whole thing is I, I like to be out of the spotlight. I like to, uh, I lead by putting other people in front. And I think we've got great leaders like yourself and coach Leroy and, and G and all the other instructors. So that's my role is to kind of stay in the background, but I do miss everybody. It's great seeing your comments and I, I can't wait to be back together with the team. Nice. Yeah. Question, guys. Question. What's the 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 tournament now? What's the guys? And Jiu-Jitsu is no. It's, the guys talk to Jiu-Jitsu is big family. You can travel for a lot of countries, and you before I I know you because of your job you train for a lot of cities and a lot of different countries. You train a lot of gyms. What's the guy you train? You feel, oh man, this is guy is very different. The other gyms. Um, I guess it just gives you a confidence. I think sometimes people will think like, hey, there's somewhere else. You know, the grass is always green on the other side. There's some other gym where people are so much better than us. Um, but you know, I've trained all over, all over the place. I've, train in all the top gyms in California everywhere I go I find a gym and, and um, I'm always pleased to come back to our home gym and, and train with all our teammates you know there's no other gym that's that's better than us Reed talked about the guys ask you here the the British National. I, I had taken a trip to London and decided to sign up for the British National Open. And Asher may take offense to this, but I just had assumed that uh, the level in Europe wasn't as good as it was in the U.S. And, um, you know, I was a brown belt. I just won Worlds at Purple Belt. I thought it was pretty good. And so I signed up for this tournament. And I, I had never heard of these guys in Europe. You know, I knew most of the good competitors. You know, you go into a tournament, you, you know you know the big names. But in Europe, I didn't know anybody. And, and in no-gi especially, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my no-gi. I competed gi and no-gi. And in my first fight, I got offended. <laughs> yeah, Asher's offended. Uh, I got submitted in, like, the first minute. 
and I was so pissed off and, and Abby was there with me and I was just like, I suck at jujitsu. I need to give up on the sport. And, um, people started coming up to me after the fight and being like, Oh man, you know, you know who you just fought. That guy's pretty good. And anyway, if, if you guys know it, it was Adam Verdinsky. He's one of the, the best black belts in the world right now. He's pretty good. And, um, I, I signed up for the open class and I fought him again in the finals of the open class at Brown belt. And, and I lost again, but the second fight was much closer. So that was just a funny experience. Like, Pretty humbling. I remember this. The guy worked the sweep the butterfly. Yeah, that's his trademark. Yeah, I remember. This guy's very good. And they were up with everybody now to him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in Jiu-Jitsu, I've I've been fortunate to to fight against some really good guys, and I, I usually lose when I reached that top level of black belt competition, like I remember at uh, Masters Worlds, I lost to Josh Hinger, but it's yeah. fun to compete in a sport where you can, you know, go against some of the best best yeah. professionals in the world. British humble yeah. pie, that's right. Um, you know, obviously I've talked about how excited we are to be, to be back open. We're gonna follow whatever guidelines the government sets forth, but you know, I'm I'm personally just eager to train. I know the people who are training at Edgardo's house are excited to train, but I have no idea what to expect. Like, are are people nervous? Are people reluctant to come back to training? How's everybody feeling? Are you guys um, worried or or eager? Or how's everybody feeling? Yeah, I think it was great. Thank you, Marcus. This was a good idea. Thanks for everybody who joined. And you know, yeah, you don't have to have a. We don't have to have a meeting like this to talk. If you guys ever have any questions or concerns, just reach out to me directly. Hey, I do want to mention one more thing. Abby just reminded me to uh, tell y'all, but one of the, the things we we want to do, at least in this initial phase when we reopen, which again I hope is next week, is we're going to start asking people to Dad. book into class. Dad. So it, yeah. there may be a limit on how many people we can have in one class. I don't know if that's going to be 10 people or 15 people, but um, we'll use the club ready app so that you can go to the class you want to attend and you can reserve your spot. So if we're limiting to 10 people in a class, everybody will have to go online and uh, book their self into class. So I just mentioned that so you can start to think about it and, and uh, we'll send out instructions on how to use the app and how to book yourself into class and everything. But that's one of the things that we'll have to do at least in the initial phase. Nice. Kurti, what is your first fight? Popsicle. Popsicle. <laughs> nice. Cool, guys. Thank you. Can't wait to see y'all soon. See you soon, guys.